Hi, Kingdom Kids. It's me, Pastor Angela. Thank you for joining me online. Let's keep learning our lesson series called Thankful Always. Okay, so far, we have learned that we can thank God for all of the good things. And last week, we learned that we can thank God even when bad things happen. Last week, our Bible story was about God's people that rebuilt the altar. Remember, they rebuilt God's altar first. Well, our Bible story today is when they rebuilt the wall. Remember, their city didn't have walls to protect them. Well, let's find out what happens. Our Bible story is from the book of Nehemiah chapters 1 through 6. <laughs> oh, 6 chapters. Okay, so you can pause this video, of course, to read all 6 chapters if you want. You can read from your Bible or a Bible app, or you can listen along. I'm going to read from... Oh, it's heavy. No, the Action Bible. This is a cool Bible because it is like a graphic novel. Like, um, what do you call it? Like comics, but there's lots of awesome pictures and all those things. Okay, so let's get to the story. This is called Wall Warriors. Okay. Oh, this is a heavy one. <laughs> this one. Okay. The Jewish exiles who have returned from Pers Persia to Jerusalem have finally settled in their old city. They've built houses and neighborhoods for themselves. They've rebuilt the temple to match its former glory. And under the leadership of Ezra, they've committed themselves to following God's word. But they have not yet had the chance to rebuild the old walls. That night, while the city sleeps, a stranger and his guards ride around Jerusalem. The stranger examines the walls. Let's see if you can see it. Stranger says, the city could be wiped out in one quick attack. And a guard says, you're right, Nehemiah, but it must have been a great fortress at one time. These walls are as thick as any we have in Persia. Okay, so here's Nehemiah and he's examining the wall. And those are his guards with them. Okay, let's see what happens next. The next day, Nehemiah calls on the priests and rulers of the city. I have examined the walls of Jerusalem. They are just heaps of broken stone. The city is defenseless. There, he's talking right here. And the guy says... You're right, but why? And then Nehemiah says, Why have I come? Because I too am a Jew. And while I was serving the king of Persia as his cupbearer, I learned that Jerusalem was without any defense. I prayed to God, and the king gave me permission to come and build up the walls. Are you with me? And they said, we are! We'll get started right away. The work begins. Every able-bodied man and boy does his part. The women help and slowly the walls begin to rise. So there they are working to build the walls. It's got to be some heavy stones. But some of the neighboring countries do not want to see Jerusalem protected. 
if the Jews finish those walls, the city will be too strong to attack. We must stop it now. Down with the walls. Okay, so remember, Jerusalem has enemies. And so they want to get rid of the walls. Stop them from building it. Okay. But while the enemies of Jerusalem plan to take the city, Nehemiah prepares to defend it. Nehemiah said, We don't have an army, only ourselves. From now on, you must hold your hammer in one hand and the sword in the other. At a moment's notice, we must be able to defend our city. Don't even take a water break without your weapon. So he has a plan. Here. His plan is that when they're building the walls, they have a hammer in one hand and a sword on the other hand. The enemy approaches. But to their surprise, armed workers rise up. Their spears raised and their bows pulled. They're armed, the enemy said. Run away! See? Oh. There they are, and those are the enemies. And see, they're armed. The workers go back to their jobs and soon strong walls and heavy gates again protect the city of Jerusalem. But inside there is an even stronger line of defense, a nation led by Ezra and Nehemiah to love and obey God. There, now they have walls. Awesome. This is from the Action Bible. Whoa, okay. The Bible says that the wall was rebuilt in 52 days. Whoa, 52 days. That's not even two months. That was really fast. And the walls were really big and thick. And they had to be strong and they went all around the city so it's not a small wall <laughs> but they did it in 52 days because they worked together and they protected each other while they worked together so from Nehemiah we can learn that we can thank God for each other do you remember our Bible memory verse? It says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Okay, your turn to say it all by yourself, but I'm going to give you some clues, and so fill in the blank spaces. Okay, are you ready? Go for it. Good job! Amazing job! Okay, so keep memorizing our Bible memory verse. You know, there are people in our lives that help us and protect us too. Just like Nehemiah and the Jews, um, the ones working on the walls, they helped each other and protected each other at the same time. We have people that do that for us and hopefully we do it for them too we help the people in our lives we help them out and we protect them also you know they can be our family members our friends our neighbors people from church or school or our city our community it can be anyone i have a challenge for you it's a simple challenge it is to tell someone 
thank you. <laughs> That's it. Really simple, right? We say thank you all the time. I hope we do. I hope you say thank you a lot. But I want you to pick one or more than one, however many people you want in your life. It can be anybody. Someone that you can thank. Someone that you can say thank you for being there for me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my family. I appreciate you. Just, just thank you. You can thank that person in person if you see them. Like if you live in the same house, if it's your family, you can thank them in person. You can call them on the phone. You can send them a thank you card with the mail. Ask your parents for help if you don't know how to send uh, mail. <laughs> um, you can thank them with a text or an email. You can thank them by just saying thank you or you can thank them and give them a big hug or you can thank them by giving them a card, a thank you card or a gift, like a small gift. So thank them for helping you out, for taking care of you, for being your friend. It's very simple, right? Just say thank you to one or more people in your life. That's your challenge. Just say thank you to someone. Hey, let's pray together. God, thank you for giving us people in our lives like our family and our friends and our church our church leaders our teachers our neighbors people that help us that love us that protect us we just thank you for them and we ask that you bless them and that you help them out that you hear their prayers and you give them what they need and what they want lord god we thank you for each other thank you for people and we ask that you continue to heal our world heal anybody who is sick heal our world from this pandemic and that we love you we believe you are doing just that you are healing our world and you are protecting us we love you in jesus name we pray amen okay so go thank someone and i will see you online god bless